Hey YouTube, it's GV Lone Guy. It's January 30th, 2012. Wanted to respond to a video of the Collision Course radio show that aired Friday, I think it was the 27th. Sounds about right. Anyway, he had uh, Starscream on, and uh, I'm going to play some of the audio of that so you can get an idea on what I'm responding to. The universal mind is a... Even for the Christians, even for the Christians, okay, the early Christians, um, the codices and the Coptic bindings that were found in 1945 that were dated back to 300 to 350 um, um, A.D., and, and they were found in, in this uh, upper Egyptian town of Nag Hammadi, okay? And what they found in there is they found, like, for example, the Gospel of Thomas, which was left out of the Bible, uh, and they also found parts of the Corpus Hermeticum, which is, as we know, that hermetic wisdom that a lot of people say to stay away from. My, what my main thing, when I, when I hear people to tell me to stay away from information or to be aware, from, aware from, um, of information, if they tell you to stay away from something, there's a problem with that. Because that's what the church has done for so long is they've told people to stay away from certain information. And that, that causes people to be half-conscious. Because when you take a look at uh, the, the Bible, uh, for example, the King James Bible, you know, you might be a Christian, but I can tell you this, the, the, the Bible that's produced that, into that King James Bible, that was produced by the texts that were selected by the Catholic Church for can, by canon law, decided which, which books went into it and which books were kept out of it. And so it all goes back to that. They're the ones that first produced it. And so you have to ask, who, who made the decision as to what books we kept in and who made the decisions on what books we're supposed to keep out? And so, and, and so the bottom line is this. When there's information out there, you shouldn't stay away from it. You should absorb it, and you should compare it to the other information so you have a good point of view from an analyst position. You can actually look at all the information and find out which, which is the truth and which is bogus. Well, the reason um, that I feel compelled to go there is because there, you know, it lies in, in humanity's uh, history. Uh, we look at historic texts, historic symbols, because uh, uh, most of the, you know, a lot of the things that we look at from historic texts is some sort of symbolism, and you take symbolism right back to the first form of uh, language, of interacting without voice or without the written word, you had symbols amongst people, and it's, you know, just like you say, you're, you're looking for a connection between more recent symbolism and, you know, the research you're going into. Basically, in a nutshell, um, Danny was saying that, uh, that the Bible was controlled by the group that Constantine put together in around 325 A.D. So this morning I did some research on looking that up on the Nicene uh, Council that put together the canon, which ultimately becomes the law for uh, governing Christians. And it also indicates the time frame when the church, in essence, formed a partnership or got married to the state. This was what took place in 325 AD at the Council of the Nicaea. Uh, they decided what books were going to go into the Bible, which books were going to be left out, and that's the story, that was the commentary that I wanted to respond to from a Christian standpoint, from a believer's standpoint, from a person of faith that believes that the Bible is the divinely inspired Word of God. Okay, so I know that's contrary to Danny's position on the Bible, and I want to explain the Christian believer standpoint on how the fallacy, or not fallacy, but the, let's see, how can I describe this? The argument has long been that it was men that made the decision which books would go into the Bible, which books would be left out of the Bible. And that is true. That is a undeniable fact. Now, the added twist to it that Danny brings to it is that this is actually, in essence, an evil, I don't want to use the word conspiracy, but might as well, an evil conspiracy um, 
that came from the Vatican, which of course at that point wasn't quite in existence, but this was the formation of the Roman Catholic Church. This is where this stuff came from. You can look this up. I'm going to put some links. I'm going to read a little bit to you from Wikipedia on the subject, and we'll look up a couple of things. It's important information, but before I even go to that degree, the background on this is, from my standpoint, is that in 2011, I, like a lot of other people, became awake and aware of something. And that something has been um, that, in the shortest way I can put this, is that the conspiracy theorists, um, turns out they were right. Okay, That's the bottom line to the um, enlightenment awareness that happened, I believe, in 2011 for lots and lots of people. And that is that the, that I'm not so sure that, I mean, we've all known that our government is, hasn't always got our best interest in mind, even though they're always greeting us with, hi, I'm from the government. Uh, we're from the government. We're here to help. My parents used to say that in a joking way regarding the 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s. So anyway, now we're beginning to see this take place, um, that the government is uh, overly intrusive into our private lives through regulation and uh, control and, and laws that are written to control us instead of uh, and take away our liberties and our freedom and our constitutional uh, God-given rights and uh, that were uh, established by the founders of our nation for our liberty and freedom. These things are being have been eroded and are being attacked and eroded on a day-to-day -day basis by Obama, by his big Daddy Warbucks supporter, George Soros, who works tirelessly to destroy the American economy because that's his lifelong goal now. Uh, he has destroyed many nations, but he wants to destroy this nation as the capstone on his life's work and the accomplishments. So this is his goal. This is what drives him. He's behind Obama, and Obama, therefore, follows in lockstep, pun intended, um, behind him to achieve the goal of to destroy the capitalism and the American way of life. So it is really up to us, the American people, to respond to that attack against our constitutional rights. Remember, those of you in law enforcement and the police have sworn an oath to upheld the Constitution and defend the Constitution from enemies, both foreign and domestic. So we're hoping that you will stand behind the oath you took and stand against this tyrann tyrannical uh, system that's in place and that is attacking us on a daily basis. So enough on that little rant, but back to the story that uh, Danny brought up last night, and that is that we can't trust the Bible because it was controlled by these same people that dictate all of these other evils in the world. And in essence, he's uh, I looked into it a little bit, and fundamentally I believe that he is correct in his position on that. It is true that the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD did make the decision as to which books would appear in the Bible and which ones would be left out. So, but here's the overriding factor, and this is what I would like to bring to uh, everyone's attention that might be questioning how you can possibly um, agree with Danny and still be a believer. And that is simply this. Um, Prior to 325 A.D., prior to, from, from the point of the crucifixion, there are certain facts that are undeniable historical facts. And one of them is that there is a person by the name of Jesus Christ that did live on this earth. So 325 A.D., in essence, is 300 years after the death of Christ after the crucifixion of Christ. Many generations had passed, many people had come and gone, but here's what I would like to draw attention back to. There is a point in time when uh, you had the actual crucifixion taking place. Physically, the man Jesus was beaten, tortured, and uh, hung on the cross, crucified, hung on the cross to die, and he did die. 
and he was put into a tomb, into a grave, and the Bible tells us in the book of Acts and so on the following events that took place after his death and burial. That on the third day he arose from the dead, and that he folded his grave clothes and the stone was rolled away from the sepulchre, as they were called, the big round stone door was rolled away, and he, uh, the account was that he is not here, he has arisen. But after that, then he was seen and walked among the uh, believers for uh, quite a long period of time following his resurrection from the dead. He appeared to many of the disciples. He appeared to a room full of, I think, 120 of them at one time. He appeared to several of the disciples walking on the uh, road. He, in fact, showed them, uh, showed Thomas uh, the uh, marks in his hands from where the piercing through his hands and so on. So <clears throat> he was among them for many, many days afterward. And furthermore, there was an actual event, again in history, recorded by Luke in the book of Acts. And Luke is the same Luke that wrote the Gospel of Luke, and he was a physician. And I uh, believe that he also wrote the book of Acts, documenting the events that took place in the immediate following uh, and the resurrection of Christ and what went on with the believers in the churches and from city to city. And he makes the account of the Lord coming and spending time with them, among them, eating with them, and ultimately ascending in front of them, right up into the clouds in front of over a hundred people. So now this account written by Luke, uh, Danny, I'm just uh, going to ask you to consider the uh, response to this being these this account by Luke is either a complete fabrication and a lie or it is a complete made-up fabrication by the uh, group in Nicaea there in, uh, in Constantine's in the Roman period. I personally don't believe that it's either one of these, but that this is a factual account from the physician, Luke, who was one of the Lord's disciples who wrote the account of his death and resurrection, the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. So anyway, my um, response to the video of last Friday on the, with uh, Francis, uh, from the Perfect Minds on the Collision Course radio show, my response is that I agree that the people that made the decision which books were to be included in the Bible were in fact men, subject to um, men's weakness and uh, men's, all of the things you want to attribute to man. But I also believe that God is sovereign. Here's here, This is the key word, God, the sovereign. God is sovereign over this. God knows this. God knew this. Um, and so even though it is true that these um, men might have been driven by who knows what forces, what influences were pushing them to make decisions accordingly and so forth and so on, and they obviously were involved in the corrupt marriage of the church with the state and the establishment of the canon law, which is used to control the behavior and and literally prosecute Christians, as opposed to our constitution, which is to protect us from the government, as opposed to the laws which are now being written to control us. By the government. So there's been a usurping and a controlling and a twisting of that document. But we're talking about the, the um, Nicaeans and the canon and the laws that were used to eventually 
dictate and formulate the Roman Catholic Church. So, and I agree that the source of all things Christian today came from this original um, source. Now, there was a movement by Martin Luther um, a little over approximately 200 years ago when he took um, and fought against the, the clergy laity issue that comes from the Catholicism, having the uh, the clergy being those that contacting God and they intercede for the rest of the laity and so on and so forth. Um, Luther was opposed to that and successfully fought against that and the outcome was the, in essence, the all of the other denominations that fall under, uh, that are not in uh, the, the Catholicism realm of things. And I don't want to get too much into that because that's not really the subject here tonight. But the real uh, concern I have is that the truth is what we're all seeking. And Danny, I know the truth is what you're seeking as well. I enjoy listening to you. I enjoy, uh, I, I watch all the things that you put out on the videos. Um, and uh, I have to admit that some of it raises questions in my mind. And as a Christian, uh, we're taught lots of times not to open up ourselves to those kinds of thoughts or things, but I've always been one that likes to investigate and make decisions and come to conclusions on my own. So that's what I'm doing in this subject, and I thought I'd open this up with a starting video uh, to respond to the radio show, and uh, my response is basically this. The fact that the Bible may have been put together by this group, no matter what the reasons, no matter what corruption might have been behind it or involved in it, I still believe that our Heavenly Father, uh, who in essence uh, makes use of and understands uh, all of the weaknesses in man, is sovereign. God is sovereign, and therefore I believe that the Bible is uh, divinely inspired, even in spite of the human um, hand involved in the creation of it. Having said that, the other aspect of this is, of course, true. What is it that those particular individuals did not want us to see? What aspect of the books that were left out is significant from the standpoint of information that maybe we should have access? Well, I agree that the selection of the books was overseen by our Heavenly Father, and therefore His sovereignty rules over the outcome. While I do admit to that and I hold on to that, I also uh, realize that God's sovereignty is also the very thing that has preserved all of the other books for all of these many, many years hundreds of years, even thousands of years. So, therefore, I am not opposed to looking further into <clears throat> those books just to see, not for the folly or to question anything that kind of comes in and challenges the basic fundamentals of the Christian belief is going to have, I'm going to have trouble with that. But things that do not contradict the basic fundamental truth of salvation and, and the all efficacy of the blood of Jesus for the purpose of forgiveness of sins so that we can then come to the Father with clean uh, conscience and, and open heart and actually be inhabited by the Spirit of the risen Christ, the Holy Spirit. That's the belief that I believe in. And if anything in these books that are found should contradict that, then I will reject that. But there, there most likely will be things in these additional books that are out there that don't conflict with the fundamental basic teachings of Christianity and might provide some additional information. Now, one last thing, and then I'm going to wrap this up. And that last thing is that, that uh, I realize that 
Danny also believes and points out in the video that he believes that creation is not just something that arbitrarily happened in this universe, but rather it was in fact done by a th outside third party to ourselves. So the definition of what that is is where we come into uh, differences, and but we'll just leave it at that. So for now, I'm going to wrap this video up. I'm going to point out some of the uh, indications of some of the stuff I read on WikiLeaks and uh, on the uh, canon and so on, and we'll wrap it up. But that's it for now. We'll give you more information later. Thanks. Thanks for watching.